Hey there, Mission Control. Well, today it's a beautiful spring day in winter, uh, about 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Definitely nothing like what the rest of the United States and Canada is basically feeling right now. Uh, at night, it's still getting down to 25 Fahrenheit, below freezing, but beautiful day today. And uh, the sun's actually out, which is different than what we've had for basically the last four weeks. Geez, a little over six weeks, maybe. Uh, you can even see the mountain. Uh, just a beautiful day. So today, because it is so nice, what I wanted to talk to you about is our solar system, uh, solar power system. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out and see what we've got. Well, there it is, 16 and a half kilowatts of uh, beautiful solar power. Now, solar power is just one of three ways, three, not six, just three. It just looks cool to put both hands up and go three, 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 third down. Um, one of three ways that we plan on uh, providing power to the system. Now, one of them we talked about already, that's a digester. Uh, here's the solar panel, it's kind of the big one. And then uh, you have wind power, which we're gonna talk about in a future video. So, uh, a long time ago when we first started, boy, it would be almost four years ago now, almost. Uh, three, over three years, a little less than four, when we were doing the design, I did a, a simulation uh, using some software and wrote some code myself and simulated all these different systems inside of the building. And what I learned out of all that is the systems will work, but you need to provide them power. And that's where this thing comes in. Now you might be thinking, of course, that's a stupid thing to say. Of course it's gonna need power, but hold on. What do I mean by it? What do I really mean is, I went through the simulation and I saw algae growing and fish growing and vegetables growing and everything doing what it's supposed to do. But ultimately, and the digester doing what it's supposed to do, ultimately everything comes down to power. Translate that again. If you wanna run a self-sustaining system like this, you need a lot of power. Now the biggest for, or source of power that we have is nuclear fusion or fission. Uh, the sun, uh, nuclear fusion, uh, is just abundant for us, right? Unless you live in places where it gets cloudy like it's been for the last few weeks for us. So solar panels, definitely something that you have to really consider, but it's not the right fit for everyone. For us, it was. So this system uh, can power the entire building plus our house when the sun is out at the right angle and it's hitting the panels correctly. So this during the summer, during basically spring, summer, and fall, until the rain comes in fall, powers everything that we need. So another thing we had to make a decision of while we're deciding uh, to put the solar panels in is to go grid tied or to go a uh, battery bank and go off grid. Now my dad and I, we always want to be off grid. That's what we always wanted to do. Now he has passed on, like if you've watched some of our intro videos, uh, he's kind of one that spurred this whole thing on, at least gave me a big kick in the butt, a little wake up call there to uh, use my life to take a risk and see what we can do to help everyone. But anyway, I digress. Uh, we always wanted to be off grid. So I looked into it and this solar panel system with the ground mount is $27,500. So usually I always get asked how much it costs. That one, that's how much it costs. Now with our electrical bill and everything, it pays itself off in 10 years. So it's a, that's a decent return on investment. Um, and the solar panels are supposed to last 20 years. So it, it works out in the end, but it's pretty close to not working out. Uh, so anyway, batteries. When I started looking into batteries, they essentially were another $30,000 and they don't last 10 years. They don't last 20 years, depending on what type of battery you get. Now there is one exception. The uh, Tesla Powerwall, that particular uh, setup, especially the Powerwall 2, is a really good looking battery. At least it seems that way right now, but I'm not a battery expert. But out of all the different types of batteries that are out there, that Powerwall 2 seemed to be the one that you really would want to go with. Uh, but we chose to go grid tied. Now why is that? Well, power's already to the property and we, don't, we didn't have all that money. We'd rather take the $30,000 for batteries and put it into the system here, which is what we chose to do. And I think hindsight being 2020, that is the right call. I'm very happy with it. And the reason for that is power, it goes right back into the grid and we get a credit on our bill. So anything that we make in excess of what we use is a credit 
on our bill. Essentially, the grid becomes our battery. So that's why we chose to go with grid tied rather than the actual um, battery bank system and have all that stuff set up. I still wouldn't mind having the battery banks uh, just so if the power does go out, you could switch over to them and run. Because right now, if the power goes out, we don't have any power. And uh, I learned that because it's all about safety. Uh, and this one, Safety Sally is absolutely right on this one. Uh, what happens is when the power goes out, uh, the inverters that we have, they detect that the grid is down and they shut the power off to the solar panel. Now, it's pretty easy to kind of figure out why. If they don't turn off the solar panel and the grid is not producing, then this becomes a power source which back feeds into the grid. And when the line workers are out there, they think the power is off. They reach up, they touch that thing, and they're getting shocked with a lot of power going through them. We don't want to hurt anyone. We don't, definitely don't want to kill anyone. So um, that's why the safety mechanism is there. Now, I really wish the systems would be built uh, so you could actually switch back and forth, but the inverters that I have, um, they don't do that. I think the Outback inverters uh, will do that, but I have Solar Edge inverters. So anyway, that's why we chose to go grid tied. Again, I think it was the right idea, especially now. Really like what we have set up here. It is working. And when we do HAB2, uh, I'm thinking, maybe a, another set over here uh, to help power everything even more. So we'll see. So this has been a continuation of the system overview and I thank everyone out there for uh, kind of sticking in with us here as we go in depth uh, to the different pieces of the system. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about wind power uh, but before we kind of close this one I want to talk about the the whole thinking about Mars thing here. Now uh, a lot of people when when I've heard about Mars mission planning solar panels are always a part of the equation. Even the National Geographic uh, uh, fiction mentory uh, that they did uh, was, you know, heavy on uh, solar panels, but it also had another power source for when the sun isn't available, and that's a nuclear generator of some form, either fission or fusion or uh, RTG, a radioisotope thermal reactive generator, right? Thermodecaying generator, RTG. Uh, so. Uh, we've definitely learned a lot about our solar panels here and anyone getting into solar panels, I hope our videos, if you go back, you can kind of see what happens when the big snowstorms come. Uh, so we're going to talk about challenges with solar in the future, so I'm not going to go into to detail on this video of all the challenges we've had. We're going to have a whole video here in the next few weeks coming up just on the challenges with solar. But when you think about Mars and you think about a place where you don't have the grid, then um, solar is something you need to consider. It's, it's, it's available. The sun is so powerful. Uh, it is just amazingly powerful that it's something you definitely need to take seriously. So it's part of our system, and I think anywhere we were to, to deploy uh, one of our future HABs, like HAB3 or HAB4, I think HAB4 would probably be the first fully deployable system, but maybe HAB3. Um, solar is going to probably be a part of it, uh, as part of the three-part system, the digester, the wind, and the solar, uh, unless we can figure out cold fusion. Hmm, that would be cool. Probably not qualified for that job, though, but it would still be fun to think about. Anyway, so uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Just a quick overview of the solar panels. Uh, now, this thing is all hooked up to the house, so we actually run from here all the way up to the house. Uh, I think it's about 700 feet. Uh, so we used aluminum uh, cable buried down on the ground there, uh, much, much bigger uh, AUG uh, as far as that goes. I can't remember all the AUG sizes, but uh, you can go back and see some of our earlier videos, the flashback series of the actual ditches and trenches and everything where we uh, installed it all. Uh, it's working really, really well. Very, very happy with it. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is just, you know, sun and just having it, having the sun. Very, very important for solar panels to work, having that sun. So anyway, thanks for following along. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian, out.